Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy, and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health, one topic at a time. First of all, I just want to thank you all so much. I got so many comments, feedback, suggestions, um, especially people wanted to hear a little more about the intermittent fasting. Um, so I wasn't planning to continue with the intermittent fasting videos right away, but I think what I'm going to do is, starting with this one, I'm just going to sprinkle them in because I don't want to really lose the whole scope of my channel. But at the same time, this is just a topic I see people are engaging with and I'm so passionate about it. So maybe every other or something for the time being. But today we're going to talk about some of my thoughts on getting started with intermittent fasting. So first of all, my usual disclaimer, um, I'm not offering any individual medical advice on this channel ever. Um, these are just maybe things um, that you want to discuss with your own provider. Uh, and, and today it's mostly what I have found in my experience. So uh, just to give it some context, if you'd seen my previous videos, you know that I've been doing intermittent fasting for eight years now. Um, I would say that one of the best things about it is just that it is so worth it, okay? If you ever think that it's hard to get through something, it's hard to start something in the very beginning, um, you need to really listen to me here. It's so worth it if you decide you're going to do this. And I'm not just talking about weight loss or weight control. I didn't really have a whole lot of weight to lose. I, I wanted to lose a few pounds, I did. Um, I wanted to lose body fat. My proportions changed significantly, and I was very happy with that. But I had other things I wanted to change as well. And intermittent fasting has so many benefits across lots of different health conditions. So with myself, um, I noticed uh, at what my annual physicals, I get blood drawn once a year, and I've done that for just so many years now. Um, my fasting blood sugar was starting to creep up. Uh, when I was getting to middle age. Uh, I never had anything over the hot limit of normal, but it was definitely getting a little worrisome to me. And that's kind of where I started um, thinking about intermittent fasting. I stumbled on it and it was, you know, really not heard, heard of at the time. And a lot of people thought it was nuts. Uh, it wasn't a household word like it is now. Well, the long story short there is that my fasting glucose, personally, it went down almost 20 points and it has stayed there. Um, so I couldn't be any happier with that and I don't see any reason that I'm not going to continue with intermittent fasting the whole rest of my life. Um, but that being said, uh, let's talk about what getting started was like. It really was hard. So like I had said um, in a previous video, the sweet spot is to get to a six to eight hour window if you are practicing the kind of intermittent fasting that's referred to as time-restricted eating, and that's what I do. So um, a lot of people don't want to start right away with a six to eight hour window, uh, and I can understand that. I did start with eight, and it was kind of hard. I'm, I'm glad I did it that way, but I can definitely see some wisdom in um, starting a little slower. Uh, you know, if you're used to eating over a 14 hour period, um, you know, going to eight might be very tough for you. And you could start with 12 and every week you could drop an hour and it wouldn't really be that long before you were down to an eight hour window, something like that. Um, but probably my first tip, um, and a lot of these tips you're going to notice are things that have to do with what's going on in your head. Um, it's managing the expectations. Um, there is no one thing you can do, including intermittent fasting, that's going to make every single thing out in your life perfect so that you don't have to think about anything else, okay? Sometimes I hear people say, well, you just eat in this eight hour window and then in that time you can do whatever you want. Or, you know, you fast two days a week and then all the other days you do what, whatever you want. There's the air quotes. Whatever you want, it's usually not really a good um, sign, okay? Um, I think of wellness as a journey. And particularly if you are wanting to become an advocate for your own health, then that means you're committing to uh, becoming a lifelong learner. And if you're a lifelong learner, then you're always tweaking things and changing things or adding something, taking something away. So intermittent fasting is a huge part of what I do, but it's not the only thing I do. I largely eat an anti-inflammatory diet. I do exercise. Um, I do other things, you know, to stay healthy. So managing your expectations, especially early on, I think is really important. Um, you can't expect intermittent fasting uh, to work well for you if you take this eight hour window and eat donuts. <laughs> so that said, um, I did find that 
it was very helpful to drink a lot of fluids. I know that's really basic. Everybody says that. Oh, you can have all the non-caloric drinks that you want, water, coffee, tea, iced tea, all these things, as long as they're not sweetened. Um, but I found in particular, hot drinks were extremely helpful when I was getting started with intermittent fasting. Now, I was not much of a hot drink person. I never felt that hot really quenched my thirst. But for some reason with intermittent fasting, it helped. And I think it's because maybe that hot volume in the stomach made me feel full. So I discovered all kinds of herbal teas and those kind of got me through the mornings. My window used to be from noon to eight. It's not quite there, it's not there anymore. But when I started from noon to eight and I get up very early, we work uh, real early in the operating room. So it was a long morning sometimes and having a few cups of herbal tea was very, very helpful. Um, Speaking of hot drinks, I do want to talk about coffee for a moment. So I was not a coffee drinker until I was in my 40s, and then I became kind of a coffee snob. Um, but I did find that I was able to use my coffee in a way that really helped me with the fast. And here's how. I delayed my coffee. If you can delay your coffee, I think it can be such a useful tool in intermittent fasting when you're first getting started. Now, <clears throat> I have heard people talk about these caffeine headaches, like they wake up every day and they have to have their coffee right away, and if they don't have it, they feel terrible, they have headaches. They, uh, that, I'm sure that's awful, I, I haven't had that. And I think it's probably because I never had coffee very first thing in the morning. I always had a delay of some, like maybe an hour or so, um, which I think, this is just my theory, I think that meant that my adrenals my adrenal glands had to do all the waking up themselves. My body never thought there was a cup of coffee coming. So I didn't have that problem where I would have a headache if I can go without my coffee for days and it doesn't bother me. Um, but if you can delay the coffee to like the last couple hours of the fast, the caffeine being an appetite suppressant might really help you to get through those last two hours, let's say. So I used to wait till 9.30 or 10 o'clock now you have to think about what you're putting in your coffee because if you usually have a latte that's cheating you can't have that if you're fasting um i used to use a half a teaspoon of stevia not the kind with dextrose it's important to read the label on the stevia because stevia is usually um, mixed with something to give it bulk okay otherwise you'd be having to measure out like my, little microscopic amounts of the stevia that you couldn't even see so it's usually bulked up with something and if that is dextrose that's sugar and you cannot have that so you have to read that label um, and then I'm going to go out on a limb here and tell you something that I did do that was technically a cheat but I found it worked really well for me and it helped me early on um, and this was a suggestion given to me by somebody else who said the same thing it's a cheat I used, I was used to the mouthfeel of some um, cream in my coffee, some creamer. Um, now that would be a cheat, but here's what I did. I used one teaspoon, that's it, and I used a measuring spoon of full fat cream, okay? Not skim milk, not half and half, full fat cream, so it's 100% fat. And I mixed that one teaspoon in with the coffee. Um, I was already 14 hours into a fast. I found that if I could do that already 14 hours into a fast, it just didn't have much metabolic impact. I, I mean, I was still going to be tapping into my fat stores and that one teaspoon wasn't enough to disrupt that. In addition to that, the fact that it was full fat cream, uh, full fat does not have, um, it doesn't elicit an insulin response or which in other words, a blood sugar response like a carb would or like a protein would. So I just didn't find that it was a problem. I did want to watch it I, um, to make sure that I wasn't creeping it back earlier and earlier. or wasn't sneaking in more and more, but I did stick to that and it helped me immensely and I'm, I'm happy I did it. It's technically a cheat. Um, the, there's a couple things that I would say that really have more to do with what's going on up in here, like I said. So hunger. Um, how do you get through it when you feel like a wave of hunger coming on and you look at the clock and you've got three more hours before you're allowed to eat anything and you've just had your hot tea maybe, I, I don't know. So here's what I learned intermittent fasting early on. Hunger is very uncomfortable when it comes on, but what's really bothering you at that moment is that you're seeing the clock says you've got three more hours to go and then you make an assumption and the assumption sounds like this 
I'm this hungry now. I've got three more hours to go for the next three hours. That's going to build and build and build. And it's going to be so uncomfortable. I'm going to have to endure it this whole time. At least that's what I thought. That is an erroneous assumption. Hunger does not stay and it does not build. Hunger comes and goes in waves. So in fact, when you look at that clock and you're thinking you have three more hours, the truth is all you have to do is get through about 10 minutes and that hunger wave will be gone. And the next time it strikes and you look at the clock, it might be another hour later and you'll be so happy. So hunger does not build. It comes and goes in waves. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, I would also say you need to really give this time. First of all, you'll have to give it time to figure out what works for you, what time window, when, how long did it take you to get down to an eight hour window? And that's really when it starts, when you're doing it right, you know? So give it some time. Um, I actually found that I gained weight at the first, the first couple of weeks. It was so discouraging. Um, looking back, I realized that at that time, I had this sense of deprivation out of time, kind of like, you know, when you start a diet, you, that sense of deprivation of food, well, this was time. So I sort of felt like I had to get all my meals in, in the eight hours. And I found myself doing that and kind of forcing myself to because it's too much to eat in eight hours. Um, and then I started to realize 12 o'clock was coming around the next day, every single day. Okay, so eventually that whole issue just went away. And I just started doing what people do you know, who eat in any time window. Some days I was hungry or in, I ate more in that eight hours. And some days I was less hungry and I ate less. And sometimes I'd have dinner a little too early and then I wasn't hungry at my normal dinner time. And then the window would close and I'd think, oh, I'm gonna be so hungry. And now oh, 12 o'clock rolled around the next day. It was really kind of the same no matter what. So um, really give it some time to get used to it. Um, the other thing I found really helpful was to think about what what kinds of eating I did that were more habituation and association. So what I mean by that is we all have things that we do just by association. For example, when you sleep in your bed at night, you feel the your sheets and your pillows or your blood, whatever it is that's your normal conditions, those are the conditions you associate with sleep. And so that's you know how you sleep well. Chances are, if you were to you know get in your bed and um, try to do some serious reading, you might start falling asleep because your bed is a place that you associate it with sleep. Um, when you start intermittent fasting, you're going to realize there are some times that um, outside your window um, where you're eating by because you associate it with another activity. So maybe sitting on the couch in the evening, watching a movie and eating chips or something like that. So what you want to do is break those associations by mixing something else in with them. So maybe you're going to still um, be on the couch and watch that movie, um, but you'll move over and get on the exercise ball and maybe sit on that or um, do a few sit-ups or uh, maybe you'll watch a movie in a different room, not on the couch, or maybe you won't watch a movie. You'll take a walk and listen to a podcast. Um, but do something to break up those associations. I, I'm at the point now where I can sit down on the sofa and watch a movie in the evening and I don't really want for any snacks, but nighttime snacking was kind of a thing for me, I learned. <laughs> um, and that was something where I had to learn to break up those different associations. And if other people have tips and tricks on that, put in the comment box because it'll help people who are watching this. Um, and then Finally, I would say to have a certain mindset about hunger and hear me out on this, where you're not viewing as hunger as something that's draining and tiring. I know we, I hear a lot of people say, oh, I get really lightheaded if I'm hungry and I can't really focus and I can't do my normal thing. And I don't doubt that. I don't argue with that, how people feel. But I think that that is a little bit habituated too by your body. If you watch my uh, other video about fat burning with in, intermittent fasting, um, the body is kind of stubborn when it's used to metabolizing just glucose that's readily available. So your body will kind of ask you to please eat something so that it doesn't have to do a, a process of converting other things that are stored into energy um, because that's just a little more biologically costly. So your body isn't going to want to tap into stored fat. That's there in case there's a famine. Um, 
But if you look at other animals on the planet, let's say a lioness who hunts for food, uh, that animal only starts looking once the hunger starts. So hunger is just the first clue that it's time to start looking around. And then it might take a while, first of all, to find something. And then you have, might have to track it for a while. And then she might um, have to expend a whole lot of energy on a sprint and, and not get it and then start all over again. So, you know, I, I think that hunger is really meant to be invigorating and make your senses very keen and make you focused. Um, I know we're not lions. Nobody put that in the comment box. I get it. It's not a perfect analogy, but I did learn that hunger can be invigorating. And I did learn that, um, you know, I, it was more comfortable once I got used to that and lived more like all the other animals on the planet. They sort of get tired and rest after they've eaten. Okay, that lioness, once she finally has a successful hunt and every, the whole pack is the pride has eaten, they all lay around and go to sleep. Um, I think that it's worth just trying to get your head around that concept um, when you're starting this. Just think about it and see if you can't find um, just even a few moments in the day where you notice that your hunger is actually a little bit invigorating. Okay, so on that note, that's about all I have for my getting started. My experience was good. I hope that I can help you. If you have questions or comments, please put them in the comment box. I hope you'll consider subscribing. And um, until next time, bye-bye.